Brian Halligan seemed like a typical happy 13-year-old. He liked to make his friends and family laugh and hoped to someday become an actor. He hung out at the youth center and went to middle school in Essex, Vermont. Brian was a very sweet, kind, gentle, sensitive boy. He was like that from day one. He just, he was a ray of sunshine in my life and, and very exuberant. He had so much energy, um, but also very sensitive. Ryan had a learning disability and wasn't particularly athletic. And as a result, had been bullied by a group of students beginning in fifth grade. You know how, how middle school was. It's just a way to like make people feel powerless and feel like, you know, like crap. And, and people will take it because they just want friends. More and more, he was coming to the car with a somber look on his face. And he'd, the minute he'd slam the door behind him, he'd be like, I hate that, you know, so-and-so. And I'd ask him why, and he'd say, he did this to me, and he said this, and he makes me feel so stupid. You know, and that would make, that would be enough to make him feel very awful about himself. I mean, other people who are a little thicker skin, it might not. Um, but it did him, unfortunately. With counseling, the situation seemed to improve. Then in seventh grade, a classmate started a rumor that Ryan was gay. As a result, Ryan retreated to the Internet as an outlet for his resentment and hurt feelings. The Halligans made a deal with their son that he could keep his computer in his room as long as his progress report from school remained positive. Uh, his progress report was not, was not good at all. Um, and, uh, you know, I, we... Again, we tried to be very love and supportive parents, but also very firm about the rules that we had. And I went into his room and I disabled his computer and I didn't get any kind of, uh, you know, high emotional response to what I had done. On October 6th, John Halligan traveled to Rochester, New York on business. The next morning at 6.30 a.m., John got a call from his wife, Kelly. Sometime after the family had gone to bed, Ryan had gone into the bathroom and quietly hanged himself. And I ended up taking a couple of days off from work and I read every single conversation because given the tragedy that we had, I was on a mission to turn over every rock and to try to understand everything that was going on in my son's life. And it was the most painful reading that I had to do in my entire life. It was just, it was, I, my heart just broke a thousand times over again. John soon discovered that the bullying that Ryan had experienced offline had continued online. I also, um, you know, found conversations on there where girls were pretending to like him, and then um, what I learned later was that they were just toying with him. And, uh, you know, in, in person they told him that uh, they really didn't want anything to do with him. And uh, that broke my heart. I just can't imagine the pain. Psychologists say that cyberbullying can be more emotionally devastating than physical bullying, that the technology allows users to inflict pain without being forced to see its effects. The result is a deeper level of cruelty. Just be careful what you say to other people. Think about like how they feel and how it would feel if it was being done back to you. These, these aren't you know, faceless people that you're harassing. Like, these are, there are real people behind the screen and they are the ones who are getting hurt by what you do. It's not just somebody who, it's not a computer or you know, program that you're just antagonizing. It's someone who's actually getting hurt by what you say. People use the internet in their homes and they should feel safe in their own house. He just, he had a wonderful smile.